All right, so we're going to talk about Sembrado, um, which is an excellent project in Burkina Faso. And uh, we've had a very busy uh, five years since we took over Channel Resources and made a discovery in 2016, uh, completed two feasibility studies, uh, completing a third at the moment. I think some forward-looking statements will be made today. So we fully funded. Um, we, we worked really hard last year to complete uh, over $330 million Australian in, in debt and equity. So we uh, signed with uh, Taurus after a very competitive uh, banking process. Uh, we raised a further $43 million as well. And so currently we're, we're fully funded. We've started construction. Uh, we're tracking really well. Uh, and we're looking at pouring gold in Q3 2020. So not far away. Uh, the project is really robust. It's got a you know, excellent sort of uh, metallurgical properties. The resource is very, very solid. Uh, we're looking at conventional mining, uh, c contract mining. Uh, so we're not sort of uh, you know, recreating anything here. It's, it's a very straightforward process. Uh, we've actually hired really well. Um, so we've actually made that transition from a, a sleepy little exploration company to uh, a really good development company. Now, obviously, we've got a construction team and, we, and we're hiring some of our operational people. Uh, and there's a lot of upside in the project. Uh, so the board, uh, obviously I'm, uh, I started the company about 10 years ago uh, with an idea sitting on my, my back porch with a mate. And it's kind of grown over the last few years and, and really taken off. Uh, so Mark Connolly, um, he's chairman. Uh, he's been involved with a lot of projects in West Africa and has got uh, operational experience and also um, was CEO of Papillon, which was bought out by B2. Uh, Simon Storms on the board, he's been there since um, Seed, pre-IPO, and Ian Kerr joined more, more recently, and Ian's um, providing some of the, uh, the guidance around construction for us and operations. The management team has been building, so the most recent addition is Matt Wilcox, and Matt had a, about eight years with Nordgold, and built two projects in Burkina. Uh, he's built more than 12 million tonnes per annum of uh, capacity in Burkina, just finished a 12 million tonne per annum heat bleach operation in Siberia and we've hired really well. So Matt's team's come on board. Uh, we're doing a lot of the early works ourselves. We do con concrete, uh, putting the tanks up, um, and like a podium, we're going to be doing the plant. On the uh, corporate overview, so you know, we, we raised some more money in, in December in, in a pretty challenging market. Uh, we're fully funded, 864 million shares on issue, uh, and the market cap's about 200 million at the current share price and you, know, you back the cash out, there's an EV on the company at the moment of about 130 million for a project that's going to do more than 250,000 ounces in the first year of production at less than 600 US or on staining costs. So you figure it out, it's, it's a fantastic project and you know, we, we're undervalued. Um, the actual shareholding has changed over the last couple of years as well. We've gone from a, a small mum and dad sort of high net worth uh, company to an institutional grade company. Um, We've got some of the most astute uh, North American and Australian investors and you know, they backed us to, to be the next significant gold producer in West Africa. Uh, the project is located about an hour and a half uh, southeast of the capital, uh, Ouagadougou, in Burkina. Uh, and look, traditionally Burkina has been a fantastic place for investment and for, for gold projects. Uh, more recently there have been some challenges in the north and in the east uh, with some um, unrest. Um, but you know our project's well located. Uh, we've you know hired well. We've upgraded our security. We're making sure all our staff and contractors are safe in Burkina, as safe as they can be. Uh, the project is uh, in a region of about 14 or 15 million ounces of undeveloped resources. So we are the first mover. Uh, we have got the highest grade and we've got the best margin on on um, ounce production. So you know I think um, you know there's there's more to come here. There has to be consolidation at some point. And, and we're just putting our head down and working really hard to get this project into production. So the, the study we put out in June um, was very robust and it's being updated at the moment. So we'll have a full study out uh, in uh, end of March. Uh, so we, we completed our first feasibility study 12 months after discovery in, in early 2017. Uh, in June we, we completed a full uh, open pit underground feasibility study and demonstrated that the project's got really high production for about five or six years. And then the production drops off because we only discovered San Brado, or sorry, discovered M1 South, uh, really, it's February 2016. So, and since then we've done a lot of drilling beneath that. Uh, we've infilled more mineralisation. We drilled a kilometre hole and hit 
high grade, at, um, you know, more than 800 metres downhole. So we, we know that there's a lot of life left here and we've got infill drilling to do, but there's no point doing it all from surface. So we actually, we've, we've broken ground, the, the box cut started, uh, we'll be cutting the portal in March. So it's, it's all moving ahead and, and some of that drilling's better being done from underground. So at the moment, so the, the after tax MPV is you know, over 400 million US dollars, uh, IRR of 50%, um, that'll improve on the next study. Uh, very short payback on capital. Uh, we're fully permitted. So what M1 South, which is really the driver of the project, what it looks like is, um, you know, people talk about ounces per vertical metre as, as being a, a good indicator on, on a project, but it really should be ounces per vertical metre divided by your strike length. So this is up to 4,000 ounces per vertical metre over 100 metres in strike. Um, it just generates so much cash and that's what's driving the projects. And we've drilled it from surface down to more than 700 vertical metres in just over two and a half years. So it's still going. Uh, it's an extremely consistent high grade deposit which is unusual. Uh, so in, in open pit it's uh, going to have a 7 gram head grade, in underground it's going to be about 12 grams, um, in resor resource it's about 25 but the approach we're taking with mining is um, we're taking hang wall load, foot wall load, we're taking dilution in between uh, and we're mining that as, as quickly as we can. We're building a 2.5 million tonne per plant so our approach is not constrained by throughput so we can actually approach the underground slightly differently. Uh, so it's going to generate a lot of money and it's got a lot of sustaining cost life of mine of just over 500 US dollars an ounce. So we've, we've infilled a further sort of 100 metres beneath the previous reserves. Um, we stepped back and drilled a kilometre oh. hole and hit you know, 25 metres at 15 grams, including about 4 metres at 40 grams. So it's a very, very high grade, short strike length, high margin underground project. Uh, the most recent drilling that we've, uh, we've done since the last studies is highlighted here and you know, we've consistently hit hundreds of grams per tonne uh, in, in both hang wall and foot wall loads. So M5 is really what sizes the plant. So we've got 10 years worth of um, open pit mining production here. It's about one and a half grams and it allows us to build a big project. So we're building a two and a half million tonne per plant. Um, we can, the more high grade we find at M1 South, we can just display some of the lower grade material from M5, so it's quite straightforward. Your life of my strip ratio is about 4 to 1. A lot of oxide, half the tonnes of oxide on this project, and you know, life of mine costs of about 700 US an ounce. So, because we've been discovering more high grade, what we're looking to do is obviously add, add so you can see the, uh, the, the gold bars there, that's our underground production, we've got about four and a half years. Uh, we've probably added another 12 months or 18 months of production in the most recent drilling in, in reserves and we've stepped down and we've actually drilled a deep hole which probably, you know, at, at sort of consistent um, vertical advance will give us about eight years of, of underground production providing everything in fields which we think it will. So, so this is an interesting slide. So in 2014 we had a, a very small heap leach plan which was you know, just under a gram. It was going to make good money. In fact, at 1,300 gold, it would make great money. Uh, we made a discovery, obviously, in 2016, and what you see there is the, the grade's actually increasing. So the next update, we should be just shy of 2 million ounces uh, in reserves, and the grade is increasing. So we're heading towards 3 grams for a blended head grade. We've broken ground. We're moving on with the project. Uh, the box cuts uh, almost complete, so we're getting ready to cut the, uh, the portal at the end of March. Uh, the camp is being compl uh, completed at the moment, the first stage is almost complete. Uh, you know, we're building the tailing storage facility, water storage facility, uh, we're stripping M5, which you can see in the lower right slide. Um, we're using a lot of that waste to build the infrastructure. Um, so we're, we're flying and we're moving really quickly. So just, um, just in summary, uh, we completed our financing last year. Uh, we're moving on with the construction right now. Uh, we're expecting to draw down our first tranche of debt uh, before the end of this quarter. Uh, early works are underway. We've, we've awarded most of our key contracts already. Uh, underground mining contracts have been awarded to Burncut. Uh, like a podium have been awarded the uh, construction of the plant. Uh, we're optimising the project. Um, we expect to improve recoveries, uh, improve, uh, increase uh, production uh, in comparison to the June study in the next update. Uh, we've done a lot more infill drilling and uh, we'll have the updated study completed by the end of March. 
Uh, in addition to that, we've got a lot of uh, excellent exploration ground. We haven't been focusing on that recently because we've been so focused on, on studies and, and getting into production. Uh, and we'll, we'll start to focus on exploration this year and, and actually uh, get back to drilling some near surface uh, targets. So what this does, it has us uh, working all the way through and um, pouring gold in, in sort of towards the back end of uh, 2020, so it's not far away. And well, we're excited about being the next West African gold producer. Thank you.